Good morning. Uh, we are back to the study of the Medium's book. Uh, last month with Elmo, you, we continued uh, theories. Um, today, we are going to study the, the last couple of items on this chapter four of book one of the Medium's book, theories. Uh, and then we move to book two. But, but um, I'm going to go over each of the different theories. These are theories that um, um, try to explain at the time of Kardec, at the very beginning of Spiritism, um, the manifestations that were happening. So different theories that uh, um, try to present it as a work not from the spirit, as a work from uh, the the participants of the meeting, uh, or in some um, notions of uh, works of the spirit. So I'm going to go through each one very briefly because we already studied them. You can find uh, our studies on YouTube. So the first theory was the charlatanism theory, which you know everyone that was participate was deceiving. Um, Again, we know that uh, the fact that uh, something has uh, fraud doesn't mean that everything that uh, it is that it's part of it is a fraud. Again, we have um, uh, photographs of the spiritual world. We have frauds and we have real ones. Um, the fact that uh, we have some fraudulent photographs doesn't mean that all photographs were fraudulent. So the charlatanism theory was the one that they used to accuse everyone of being deceiving others. Uh, the madness theory that everyone that was uh, there in the meeting were, was crazy. So everyone was out of their minds and uh, all of these were, were crazy um, theories and uh, they all needed to psychiatric treatment and not uh, not be trusted. Then you have the hallucination theory, which means uh, that all those participants were hallucinating. There was no work from the spirits. Everybody was hallucinating. Uh, it was an, all an illusion or some kind of refractory effect. So... Uh, those that participate in the meeting were all hallucinating. There was no real spirits there. Then the crackling tandem, which is a theory that all the, the noises were produced by the physical participants of the meeting, not, not in from the spiritual world. Then the physical cause theory. Um, again, that's when the, the critics start to admit the presence of spirit that the phenomena exist. Um, <clears throat> but the first theory, the physical cause theory, that all the phenomena was produced by magnetism, electricity, or some kind of fluid, uh, an exclusively material and physical cause. Then the reflection theory, which is a theory that um, everything that was happening was um, still... The, pre the participants, but uh, the participants outside their physical body. So what was the reflection theory where the, where the participants um, expressing themselves as spirits uh, outside their physical bodies. But the, the, the problem with this is that some of the communications were produced by people that didn't know how to read and write, would write messages. People that had no idea about scientific fact, facts would produce scientific uh, uh, articles. So that was the, the argument against the reflection theory. Then you have the collective soul theory. The, all the communications comes from the manifestation of everyone together, um, a higher order, um, community of spirits giving uh, the communications in in unison. Uh, there was even a, a, a book, a brochure published called La Lumière, The Light, 
that uh, was published at the time of Kardec that talked about uh, this collective soul theory. Um, again, uh, you cannot explain the different um, different types of uh, communications. You know, if you have one collective soul, you would think that all the manifestations would be at least similar or at least follow a pattern. If you have communications that are more elevated, communications that are uh, gross or even, uh, you know, inferior communications or uh, aggressive ones, how could it be all part of a collective soul? Then you have the somnambulism theory, which is, again, like the collective soul, that the intelligent communications produ uh, are pro proceed from the soul of spirit of the mediums themselves. So you go into a, a state of trance, you go outside your physical body, and you give the communication uh, with your knowledge being larger than the knowledge of your physical uh, incarnation, which is possible because we know more than what we are. We have restrictions. But again, um, it doesn't explain some... Uh, some, uh, some communications that go way beyond the capacity of the medium, even if you expand the capacity of the medium. Then we have a couple of um, types of communication that are still um, accepted and, uh, and divulged by some religious beliefs. The first one, the pessimistic, diabolical, demoniac theory, which is all the spirits communicating are the demon. And that's, uh, you know, some evangelical um, uh, churches have this belief that all communications come from the devil, which, you know, we, we, we don't need to go a little much further. We know the communications are different. How can a, a, a beautiful, enlightened communication come from the devil? The devil contradicts itself by giving an enlightened communication. And the other way around, which is the optimistic theory, meaning all communications comes from uh, evolved spirits, perfect spirits. And this is uh, some spiritualist uh, uh, beliefs here uh, in the US have this theory that all communications come from evolved spirits. And again, um, the same way that they, they cannot all come from the devil, they cannot all come from uh, superior spirits because sometimes you have communications we see in our mediumship meetings from suffering spirits from spirits that do not know that they are dead so how can it come all from uh, evolved spirits um, so you have the unispirit or mon mono spirit theory which is a variety of the optimistic theory which is also believed that there is one soul spirit who communicates with humans and that this spirit is Christ. Again, does not explain the, the theories, the, the, the communications that are from suffering spirits, that are from angry spirits uh, and spirits that uh, you cannot believe that Christ would give this sort of communications. And also, if it was everything came from Christ, they would be very similar, uh, the communications. They cannot be completely different. And that's the last one we studied last month. Now we are going to study the multi-spirit or poly-spirit theory, which is the theory of what we really accept and understand as the work of uh, <clears throat> spiritism and mediumship according to spiritism. Okay. So, uh, Soraida, can you yes. read it for us? Yes. 49. The multi-spirit or poly-spirit theory. All the theories that we have examined, including the ones that deny spirit phenomenon, are based on certain incomplete or badly interpreted observations. If a house is red on one side and white on the other, whoever has seen only one side or the other will affirm that it's either only red or only, only white and would thus be both right and wrong at the same time. But whoever has seen both sides of the house would say that it is red and white, and it would be the only one aware of the real truth. The same applies regarding opinions about spiritism. They can be correct concerning 
certain aspects, but wrong if they generalize what is only a part by regarding as a rule what is actually only an exception or interpreting as a whole what is really only a part. That is why we have stated that those who desire to seriously study this science must observe it a great deal and for a long time because only time will enable them to ascertain the, det the details. Notice the delicate nuances and observe an infinite number of characteristic facts that will shine like a luminous rays of light. However, if they remain on the surface, they will expose themselves to making a premature and thus erroneous judgment. Let us take a look at the general results which we have arrived at by making a complete observation of the subject and which as of today have formulated the belief, so to speak, in the universality of spirits for all the above listed restricted theories are no more than isolated opinions. Okay, and before we go into the into the uh, list, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what Kardec is telling us here. Mm -hmm. um, again, basically what Kardec is telling us here is, you have to study, you have to study to criticize. If you have to know something, it's very easy. And we do that a lot. Uh, we criticize things without really knowing, without really going deeply into it. Kardec gives the example of the house, the red and white house. And there is another very interesting example, you know. You put four blind people uh, around an elephant and ask them to describe by touching the elephant uh, what they are uh, seeing in a sense, right? And you have four different uh, descriptions of an elephant. The first one that will descri describe the trunk, the other one will describe the legs, the other one will describe the side or the back. All of them are partially correct. None of them are fully correct. But what Kardec is telling us here is the same, right? You cannot... Uh, you cannot criticize spiritism until you have fully awareness of what spiritism is all about. Again, <coughs> you can criticize <coughs> sorry, aspects of it if you study parts of it, right? So spiritism is sci scientific, philosophic, philosophy and moral slash religious uh, doctrine. So a scientist that uh, wants to criticize the scientific aspect of spiritism would go into the area of his or her knowledge talking about science according to what we understand science in the material world. But when we talk about scientific aspects of spiritism, we are talking about the spiritual world. So how can a scientist criticize the study of the perispirit scientifically? So when we are studying the perispirit, it's not a philosophical study. It's not a moral study. It's a scientific study, but it's a spiritual scientific study. So for someone that does not accept the existence of the spiritual world, they will never uh, be able to understand and they will criticize something that they don't understand. So what Kardec is telling us here is um, you don't need to, to accept spiritism. You don't need to be interested. But don't come and criticize if you haven't studied it. Study, and then we can enter into a serious discussion, right? Uh, it reminds me of what... Uh, Chico Xavier uh, used to say when people criticized him, right? Uh, and uh, they asked him why he would never reply. And he said, if, if they are right in their what they are saying, there's nothing I can say. And if they are wrong in what they are saying, they don't deserve my answers. So again, um, we need to go deeper and study spiritism. And those that are criticizing, uh, if they have 
they are right in their their um, <laughs> criticism. Ah, let's uh, study their criticisms a little deeper. If they are criticizing just out of lack of knowledge, we move on, we move forward, and we uh, we don't allow it to to disturb us. Okay. Okay. So these are the definitions of uh, mediumship here that Kardec is going to go through now. Okay. Number one. Spirit phenomena are produced by extracorporeal intelligences, that is, by spirits. Two, spirits comprise the invisible world and are everywhere. They populate space to infinity. They are spirits who constantly surround us and with whom we are always in contact. Three, spirits continuously act both upon the physical and mental worlds, and they are they are one of the powers of nature. Number four, spirits were not created as a separate class of entities. They are the souls of those who have lived either on the earth or on other worlds and who have shed their corporeal envelope. Hence, it follows that the souls of men and women are incarnate spirits who at, de at death become spirits once again. Number five, they are spirits of every degree of goodness and malice of wisdom and ignorance. Number six, they are subject to the law of progress and all may achieve perfection, but depending on how they employ they, their free will, they will achieve it in a short time or a long time, according to their own efforts and volition. Number seven, they are happy or unhappy, depending on the amount of good or evil they did during their lifetime and the degree of development they achieved perfect and unallowed happiness is only attained by those who have reached the highest degree of pur purification. Number eight, under certain circumstances, all spirits can manifest themselves to humans and the number of those who can communicate is unlimited. Number nine, spirits communicate through mediums who serve as their instruments and interpreters. 10, one can recognize whether spirits are more evolved or less evolved by their language. Good spirits only offer good counsel and say only good things. Everything attests to their advancement. Evil spirits deceive and all their words bear the stamp of imperfection and ignorance. The various degrees through which spirits pass comprise the spirit hierarchy. Spirits book part two, chapter one, number 100. The study of this classification system is indispensable for eval evaluating both the nature of the spirits who manifest and their good and bad qualities. Well, here, <coughs> Kardec brings us <coughs> the description of spirits and the ability to communicate through medium. So, spirit phenomena is produced by spirits. Uh, extracorporeal intelligence, spirits that are not incarnated. They are part of the invisible world and they are everywhere. Everywhere meaning around us uh, in different spheres and throughout the universe. They populate space to infinity. We are always in contact with spirits, depends on our um, vibrations and our uh, uh, moral involvement with the, of the spirits that surround us. They continuously act upon the physical and mental worlds, and they are one of the powers of nature. Again, spirits are just us on the other side. Spirits are those that lived here, had incarnations here or somewhere else, and are in the spiritual world, uh, errant spirits, as uh, it's called in the spirits book, Spirits that are between incarnations are called errant spirits. The only spirits that are not errant spirits are perfect spirits when they reach the level of perfection that they no longer need to reincarnate. Um, according to spiritism, incarnated spirits are called souls. Again, this is according to spiritism because you are going to find the different definitions of soul outside spiritism. But in spiritism, 
Kardec calls incarnated spirits, souls, discarnated spirits, errant spirits or spirits. Of course, like here on earth, there are spirits of every degree and goodness and malice of wisdom and ignorance. When we go back to the spiritual world, when the physical body dies, we don't change. We are there, we are we awake, wake up on the spiritual world exactly the same as we were when we died in terms of moral and intellectual evolution. We find ourselves where our mind takes us. Um, we are all evolving, we, can, we are all going to achieve perfection, but according to our free will, we will take longer or sh shorter or longer period to achieve it again. Uh, we spirits are incarnated on earth are all spirits, still imperfect spirits, still a long way from perfect spirits with the exception of our master Jesus that was the only perfect spirit that incarnated on earth to uh, bring us the message and the guidance and the teachings. Spirits that are communicating are going to be happy or unhappy, depending on the amount of good or evil they did during their lifetime. Uh, only perfect spirits uh, are uh, perfect, happy. And uh, again, for us, we don't, we don't have the ability or the capacity to understand what is perfect happiness. We can only imagine, but because we are imperfect, and again, we can describe our where we come from, our evolutionary past. That's why we we describe so well the hell and the lower zones, the what is called hell, right? But the, which is really the lower zones. And we have a lot of difficulty in describing uh, heaven because we've never been there. So it, it is not something that we, we normally, we don't even have words to describe it. All spirits can manifest themselves under certain circumstances. Again, it's not a spirit wants to communicate and it communicates. It's not that easy. There are certain things that uh, need for a, certain requirements for a spirit to communicate and we're going to study in this book what are the, the characteristics and things. But in theory, all spirits can communicate uh, the number of those who can communicate is unlimited. But not all of them are going to be able to communicate because there are certain restrictions imposed by the spirits themselves, by this, the, the, the spiritual guides that uh, are responsible for them and for us. Of course, spirits communicate through mediums who serve as their instruments and interpreters, even uh, physical phenomena, which is uh, because we know intellectual phenomena, we are more used to it, which is the psychophonic psychography. But there is also the physical phenomena, which is the noises, which is the direct writing and some other the, the manifestations that we're going to uh, study. They all need a medium. Without a medium, there is no way the spirit can communicate. Can the medium be unaware of it? Yes. It can, but uh, without a medium, the spirits cannot communicate. And uh, by analyzing their communication, we can uh, we can see if a spirit is more evolved or less evolved. More evolved spirits will say a lot in very little uh, words. Uh, what uh, pseudo wise spirits are those that talk a lot, write a lot think that they know a lot and in the end you read pages and pages and you get very little out of it uh evil spirits or less evolved spirits you get uh very quickly the understanding of uh their uh, their communication because the words the words show ignorance and show imperfection kardec recommends us to go to the spirits book on question number 100 the hierarchy the spirit hierarchy, where we are going to see the three different classes of spirits, the imperfect spirits, the, the uh, more evolved spirits, and the perfect spirits. And there are the three uh, 
categories. There are subdivisions in it that uh, Kardec analyzes and studies. We we are going to get there. Uh, we are starting the Spirit's book. We are on question around question thirty, I think thirty five. We're get, going to get there in some weeks. Uh, the Spirit hierarchy. Okay. Questions, comments here so far. We're good. Okay. All right. This is the last one. Okay. Number 50, material soul theory. This theory consists solely of a particular opinion about the essential nature of the soul, according to which the soul and the perispirit are not distinct from each other, or rather the perispirit is the soul itself, which is gradually purified through several transmigrations, like alcohol is purified through several distillations. In the Spiritist doctrine, however, the perispirit is considered as simply being the fluidic envelope of the soul or spirit. Since the perispirit is a type of matter, albeit highly etherealized, then for the theory in question, the soul will also be a nature that is more material or less so, according to its degree of purification. This principle does not invalidate any of the fundamental principles of the Spiritist doctrine since nothing changes in relations to the soul's destiny. The conditions for its future happiness is exactly the same, with the soul and perispirit forming a whole known as the spirit, like the germ and perisperm form a unity known as, as the fruit. The entire matter may be reduced to regarding the whole as homogeneous instead of being composed of two distinct parts. As we can, as we, as can be seen, this issue is of little consequences, and we would not have addressed it at all if we had not encountered persons who were inclined to see a new school where, in fact, there was nothing more than a simply interpretation of words. This theory is quite restricted, but even if it were not, it would no more mean that there is a schism among spiritists than the two theories about the emission of the undulations of light would indicate a division amongst physicists. Those who want to go their separate ways over such a childish issue prove that they give more importance to accessories than to the principle itself. And they are incited to dissension by spirits who cannot be good, for good spirits would never want to sow the seeds of acrimony and discord. For that reason, we have urged all true spiritists to guard themselves against such suggestions and not to attack a greater importance to certain details than they deserve. The core is what is essential. Nevertheless, we believe we should mention a few words about what those who have the soul, who hold the soul and the Paris spirit as being two distinct principles base, base their opinion upon. It is based upon the teaching of spirits themselves who have never deferred in this respect. We are alluding to enlightened spirits, however, because among spirits in general, there are many who do not know any more and even many who know much less than human beings know, while the opposing theory is a human conception. We neither invented nor dreamed up the existence of the Paris spirit in order to explain spirit phenomena. It is existence was revealed to us by the spirits themselves and observation confirmed by it. It was further supposed, supported by studying the sensations of spirits, and especially in the phenomenon involving tangible apparitions, which for others would imply the solidification and subsequent disaggregation of elements comprising the soul and consequently is disorganization. Further, furthermore, it would be necessary to admit that such matter, that of apparitions, which could have become perceptible to our senses is the intelligent principle itself, which would be no more rational than confusing the body with the soul or clothing with the body. As for the utmost nature of the soul, we know nothing. When we state that it is immaterial, we must understand the term in relative and not in an absolute sense, because absolute immateriality would be nothing less. And the soul or spirit is something, however, what we mean to say, therefore, is that its essence is so highly evolved that there is absolutely no analogy to what we call matter per se. And that is why for us, it is immaterial. 
Okay. Where is Paco in English, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Um, <clears throat> so, the material soul theory. Uh, first, we have to define what is the perispirit, right? Mm -hmm. When we, and, and we just studied this on the Spirit's book on Thursdays, right? Um, we have God, the intelligent principle, and the universal fluid. God created the intelligent principle. God created the universal fluid. From the universal fluid, there are, or cosmic fluid, derives everything that is what we call matter, energy and matter. Everything that is non-intelligent derives from the universal fluid, including our perispirit or our spiritual body and our physical body and our thoughts, and everything that is not the spirit or the intelligent principle. Everything comes from the universal fluid, the cosmic fluid. That's the perispirit, including the perispirit. This theory here, the material soul theory, says that uh, the spirit is the perispirit, meaning there is no such thing as a separation between the perispirit and the spirit. It's one and the same. Which, um, according to what we learn in Spiritism, it's not true. But what Kardec is telling us here is, even if it's not true, and we know it's not true according to what the spirits have told us, does it really matter? Are you going to be a better person if the soul and the spirit the very spirit are separate or if the soul and the very spirit are one and the same thing does it make any difference for our your evolutionary journey is the same thing as when people start to discuss who uh you know who was the reincarnation of who right if um if Emmanuel was uh, who he was, if Alan Kardec was Ian Hus, and then Alan Kardec was the Druid. These are all facts that we know. Emmanuel past incarnations as Publio Lentulus, uh, and then on 50 years later as, um, forgot the name, um, and all, all the other reincarnations that Emmanuel tells, about, tells us about. Again, it's information, but is it important for us if he was, he was or he was not? The message is what's important. So this theory, the principle of material soul, does not invalidate any of the fundamental principles of spiritist doctrine since nothing changes in relation to the soul's past. Again, according to spiritism, um, this the, the intelligent principle, which eventually becomes the spirit, the individual spirit, has a spiritual body, perispirit. It's not the perispirit. Um, the perispirit is like a clothes that we wear during our uh, evolutionary path. The perispirit evolves with us adapts to each world that we are incarnated. It has the characteristics of the physical world. So the perispirit of the spirits that are around Earth uses the elements of, of the planet Earth. Perispirit is very malleable and very uh, and change according to the spirit's thoughts and vibrations. And we see this in the studies of André Luis in the books of uh, Life in the Spiritual World. We see the ability in the book Liberation, the ability of uh, Gregorio to change the very spirit of a lady that uh, was there, uh, you know, that he was imposing uh, his domination and, she, and he made her appear like, uh, like a wolf. Um, so the very spirit is very malleable and we can control the peri spirit. Yes, Ebony, go ahead. Um, if I understand this correct, our peri spirit um, is to facilitate our evolution. Um, 
and the pure spirits do not have a peri spirit. Is that correct? They do, they do as we understand, they do have. You know, okay. if you think uh, for us to incarnate, we need a peri spirit because the peri spirit is what forms the physical body. So if you think of Jesus, right, a perfect spirit, how could he incarnate on earth if he didn't have a peri spirit? He needs a peri spirit to form the physical body. So even Jesus, a perfect spirit, would have a peri spirit. But the thing is, is it, it is so ethereal when you are a perfect spirit that is, it is almost as if they don't have a peri spirit. But uh, they would have. It's just that uh, we, we cannot even describe because it's so much beyond our ability to understand and describe. But uh, by logic and reason, we conclude that they do have very spirit. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to incarnate here. And again, Jesus did not reincarnate because reincarnation presupposes a necessity of readjustment. And our perfect spirit doesn't need to reincarnate. Okay? Okay, thank you. So, um, again, and then Kardec concludes talking about the instructions we receive from the spirits, from the enlightened spirits, talking about the peri spirit. Again, the, the chapters we just studied in the spirits book, the very beginning, matter and soul, uh, talking about uh, the description and the, of the, the three aspects, God, uh, the intelligent principle, and the universal fluid or the cosmic fluid. The, um, Kardec says its existence was revealed to us by the spirits themselves and observation confirmed it um, and then he talks about apparitions okay which is uh, Kardec called apparitions what we call today materialization right tangible apparitions we call nowadays materialization which is a spirit materializing itself in front of us a materialization is something that uh, if a spirit materializes in the middle of a room full of people, everyone would be able to see the spirit. That's a materialization. It's different from a medium that is able to see a spirit that is in the spiritual world, but nobody else around can see because they are not mediums. So if something or someone materializes, everyone can see. For materialization, the perispirit, you, you, you know, it's the perispirit that you are seeing. You are seeing the spirit materializing using their perispirit. So Kardec says, if uh, the end of a materialization is a disaggregation of the perispirit, uh, because the perispirit disappears and then goes back to the spiritual world, it means that this, the soul will disaggregate itself, which doesn't make much sense. Uh, and then he ends up talking about what uh, the inmost nature of the soul of the spirit is immaterial. But then he talks, it's immaterial because we don't have a better word for it. Because absolute immateriality will be nothingness. And this spirit is something. So uh, the essence is evolve. And there is no, no analogy that we can use. So that's what he Kardec talks about uh, the peri-spirit and the spirit. Again, uh, it's important for us to, to understand the concepts, but uh, again, if we don't, if we have trouble fully understanding and uh, we need to study further, we put it aside, we leave it for our to study further. That's, you know, if the peri-spirit and the spirit is one and the same or is separate at the moment, that's not relevant to us on our evolutionary path. Uh, do we understand and we, we can we accept and are we fine with it? And so good, then we can move on. But if something uh, it's not uh, clear and we can still cannot fully understand or accept it, let's leave it for uh, later. Um, again, um, he mentions a lot of uh, items here in the Spirit's book, items 23, 82, 257, uh, that 
93, we can go there in the Spirit's book and study questions 93, 257, 2382, if we want more information. And now a communication from a spirit called Lamene uh, with regards to this matter, okay? Sure, I have a question. Go ahead, Roger. It may not be that relevant, but I'm just thinking for a a spirit that's uh, on like on a spiritual colony that's close to earth do you, do we have any information if maybe this is very nuanced any information about their pair spirit is that the same material as as in earth because we're so close or it's a complete different um no it is, it is yeah the pair spirit of those that are around earth is composed of of uh, chemical elements of earth um, so when you move from Earth to another planet, the perispirit changes and adapts itself to the new world that you are moving to. Mm -hmm. um, how is this process and how does it work? Uh, we have uh, we have basic knowledge. We don't have further, you know, a lot of deep information. The information we have is that the material that forms the perispirit belongs to the world where the, the spirit is uh, present. So all the, the 25 to 30 billion spirits that are around Earth, incarnated or discarnated, their perispirit and ours, because we are, the, you know, we have a physical body, but we have a perispirit also, right? Um, they are very similar to those that are in the spiritual world. More mm -hmm. ethereal, less ethereal, depends on where we are. You know, less uh, lower zones, more more elevated places. It becomes it becomes more malleable, more uh, mm -hmm. easy to change as you evolve, right? But even in the in lower zones, uh, it's already malleable. The example that I just gave on this lady that was uh, transforming the wolf shaped form, right? means that it's malleable right um the <clears throat> the spirits that are suffering because of the pain that they feel in their perispirit which is uh, related to their physical body that they left behind <clears throat> it's you know the pain is not really in the leg of the perispirit the pain is a generalized feeling in the mind of the spirit it's localized in the physical body. It's not localized in the perispirit. But because of our um, degree of evolution, we feel, you know, you lived uh, 70 years here on Earth, feeling your leg, feeling your, uh, your arm, feeling your head. So you go back to the spiritual world and you're going to feel in the same places, right? It takes a, a while for you to understand that. And... Uh, <clears throat> and uh, generalize the sensations, right? So that's why uh, I always joke, right? You, you use uh, eyeglasses your whole life, right? You wake up in the spiritual world, the first thing you are going to look is for your eyeglasses. You no longer need them there in the spiritual world, but you don't know how to see without them. So mm -hmm. for a certain period of time, you still need them in a way, right? Unless you fully understand, until you fully understand and you no longer need them. Right, so you use glasses. Be prepared. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get rid of them right away. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll look for my contact lenses when I wake up there on the other side. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Continue, John. Fifty-one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Following is a response by one spirit with regards to the matter. What some call the perispirit is the same as what others call the fluidic material envelope. So that I may make myself understood in the most logical manner, I will state that this fluid is the perfect ability of the senses, the extension of both sight and thought, but I am referring to highly evolved spirits. As for imperfect spirits, they are still completely impregnated with earthly fluids. Thus, they are matter as you understand it. Consequently, they experience hunger, cold, etc. Experiences that cannot touch high order spirits, since the earthly fluids have already been distilled out of their thought, that is, their soul. In order to progress, 
the soul always requires an agent without which it would appear to be nothing to you. Or better, you would not be able to conceive of it. We errant spirits regard the perispirit as the agent through which we communicate with you, whether indirectly by means of your body or perispirit, or directly with your soul, hence the infinite variety of both mediums and communications. As for the scientific standpoint, that is the very essence of perispirit itself, that is another subject. First, you should understand its logical possibility. That will leave a discussion on the nature of the fluids, which is inexplicable for now, since science does not yet know enough about them, but will finally understand them if it wishes to keep pace with spiritism. The perispirit may vary and change infinitely, whereas the soul is the intelligence. Its nature does not change. Do not go any further with this subject, for it is a question that cannot be yet explained. Don't you realize that I too am investigating the matter as you are? You are researching the perispirit while we are currently researching the soul. Therefore, wait. Okay, so this message from Lamene um, talks a little bit what uh, uh, Rogério just asked, right? Um, what some call the perispirit is the same as what others call the fluidic material envelope, the spiritual part. A lot of, if you go outside spiritism or the spiritualist, they will call it the spiritual body. Um, so here he talks about the, uh, the, this fluid on evolved spirits is the perfectibility of the senses, the extension of both sight and thought. So the perispirit of a more evolved or highly evolved spirits, the senses are everywhere. <clears throat> it's not located in a specific place. As for imperfect spirits that we were discussing here, right, uh, Rogério, they are completely impregnated with earthly fluid. So they are matter as you understand. So that's why they feel hunger, they feel cold. Um, the earthly fluids on the high order spirits have already been distilled out of their thought. You know, the evolution is our through our thought, intellectual and moral evolution combined that makes us better understand our peri spirit and better move away from the earthly feelings that our physical body has. Okay? So that's why uh, the inferior spirits, less evolved spirits, feel the same thing that they felt when they were incarnated on Earth. Until they understand uh, how to move on from this uh, physical uh, sensations that they used to have on Earth, they will continue having them. And that's why when we have the, the communications from suffering spirits on our mediumship meetings, they come and complain of localized pain, of cold, of hunger, of uh, all the physical uh, uh, feelings that we had when we were incarnated, right? And that's why many spirits go back to the spiritual world and think that they are still alive because they are feeling exactly the same things they were feeling when they were incarnated. Uh, so it takes a while for them to understand that, that they are no longer uh, incarnated, especially if they don't believe that there is an afterlife, that there is a survival of the soul. Um, so uh, Elamene continues here talking, we errant spirits, meaning he is still an, a spirit that needs to reincarnate, regard the peri spirit as the agent through which we communicate with us. Again, the communication uh, from a spirit to an incarnated medium is done peri-spirit to peri-spirit. The peri-spirit of the incarnated medium uh, partially detaches from the physical body in a state of trance, connects with the peri-spirit of the communicating spirit and then receives the communication via thought. 
Um, so that's why when we say we talk about the, the communications of uh, the medium's uh, psychography, it's never a hundred percent of the th the thought of the spirit because there is always an interference of the medium, which can be bigger or smaller depending on the quality and the ability of the medium to detach itself and to allow it to be a clean vessel for the communication of the spirit. Uh, when he talks about directly with your soul, meaning, you know, sometimes when the medium is not even aware that is being used, the the ectoplasm or the that is being used by the spirits to for the communication. Um, and then uh, he talks about uh, the, the the nature of the, the perispirit, that uh, we are studying it, and uh, this perispirit may vary and change infinitely. Uh, and the soul is intelligence, its nature does not change. So it, it goes against what uh, we last studied, that, uh, the, the theory of the material soul that is one and the same. He said the perispirit changes, the spirit does not. The intelligence does not, its nature does not change. Again, its nature, not the evolutionary path or the evolution of the spirit. Uh, what they say here is the nature of the spirit doesn't change. The spirit evolves and changes, but the nature does not of the intelligence, okay? Um, and he said, don't, don't try to go any further on this subject because you cannot, it be explained yet and and he says that they are also investigating researching the soul while we are researching the fairy spirit uh so you know we have to understand our limitations in terms of where where we can go with our studies okay okay, okay. no i just have a comment here i think one of the things i think as maybe a, a bit of research that we do without realizing during the, the, the mediumship meetings, when spirits come in with certain ailments or, or if complaining or feeling uh, effects of how they passed, if there is a, a moment of realization right at the, at the meeting, right, where they, they understand or they start feeling that that doesn't exist anymore, it's interesting that we see the change immediately, right, because there's a click. And I think for us, like, just confirming what's seen here, right? Just by watching the reactions or sometimes that those sessions where your spirits think they have, I don't know, a broken leg or something, whatever that sort. And all of a sudden they, they you, you physically see the change of like, they're no longer holding or, or feeling that something is damaged, right? Because they realize it's, it's their body is no longer there, which is interesting. It just confirms this. Yeah, um, just, uh, you know, I want to go a little bit further on what you said, because there may be people here that uh, are never participated yes. in the mediumship meeting, right? So when we are, um, uh, we both work in the mediumship meeting, Rogério is a medium, I work as a dialoguer, I talk to the spirits that are communicating. Sometimes the spirits come and complain about the pain about, uh, you know, they are still struggling with everything they were feeling when they were incarnated. So let's say a spirit, uh, a, 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 a spirit that was in a hospital for a very long time, suffering and struggling, and then goes back to the spiritual world. And it's in the state of confusion, still feeling the same pain, the same um, struggles that they were feeling in the, in the well, while they were in the hospital. So when what we tell them is that... Um, if we feel that they are prepared to listen, that they are no longer uh, incarnated, some of the spirits are not prepared and uh, we try not to tell them. For those that can, we think that they can and it's important for them to know that they went back to the spiritual world. We have this conversation that what uh, they, they're feeling is reflection of the, what they were feeling when they were incarnated that we are going to provide the treatment and the assistance for their pain. Uh, of course, we have the team of uh, spiritual workers, uh, the doctors, nurses that work in the spiritual world that provide this assistance. And when the spirits start receiving this assistance and accept the fact that they really are no longer incarnated, they 
immediately feel uh, relief and feel the difference. Uh, it's it's in the mind of the spirit in the end, right? So the first thing is accept that you are no longer in the physical world. Second, that you are receiving the treatment and that you can no longer feel the pain and the suffering that uh, you were experiencing in the physical world. And then it starts to, to disappear. But it doesn't happen all the time. Some spirits, when they learn that they are no longer in the, the spirit physical world, they get angry. They get uh, they get uh, they 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 deny it. They don't accept it. So these spirits they continue feeling the same things that they were feeling, uh, because it, it you need to have acceptance of your uh, reality. The same way that we we mentioned that you know someone that needs help can only be helped if it accept accepts the help, right? like a drug, drug addict. If you don't recognize that you are a drug addict and you don't look for help, you are not going to be able to be helped because you need to look for help, right? It's the same thing with the spirits. They need to understand and accept that they are in need of help and that they can receive the help. The help is there. So that's uh, what happens in our mediumship meetings, okay? All right. Oh, yes, Ebony. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sense of what you said. Um, yeah. So, is it their thought and their belief of being of still being uh, reincarnated that causes them to feel to continue feeling these localized pain or whatever it is that um, they were feeling when they incarnated? Is it their yes. thought? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's the thought in the sense that. Uh, because um, when we well, let's say someone that has been sick in a hospital for a very long time, right, it's months in the hospital with the sickness, um, many times when this this person dies, the physical body dies, and they go back to the spiritual world, they were such a long time in a state of confusion already in the physical world, in the physical body right in their physical mind that they don't even notice that something has changed so they go back to the spiritual world but they continue to be in a state of confusion because they were already in a state of confusion so for them nothing has changed and uh so they need to understand and accept they are no longer incarnated they are no longer in the physical world so it is in the mind, but it's not easy for, you know, um, I, actually for those that has been, have been sick for a long time, it's much easier than if someone dies in an accident, right? If someone dies in an accident and um, gets injured and wakes up in the spiritual world, many times we, we don't tell them that they have died because it, 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 makes, it may cause more harm than benefit them. We just tell them that they are being treated, that they are assisted, they are in a hospital type, right? In a house of assistance. And they, they will slowly uh, get the understanding because we had the experience many times of telling uh, spirits that they have died and the, the result is worse for them, right? They get more anxious, more angry, more um, revolted or... Uh, more, you know, they, they cannot deal with, with it. So the spirits that have been sick for a long time, suffering from pain, they are, it's easier for them to understand and accept it, especially if they start seeing the results of the healing process in the spiritual world. So the pain starts to subside and disappear or, or uh, diminish a lot, then they are more ready to accept the reality, the new reality. Um, they are, you know, generally they will ask the questions. So what happens now? What I'm going to do now, right? But when they reach that point is that they are accepting the reality. For spirits that have sudden death, it's much more difficult for them because it's sudden change. It's difficult for them to, for them, especially if they, they have no understanding of the spiritual world, it's much more difficult, you know, for us that study spirit is, right? Even if you have a shock of a sudden death, everything uh, appears to be completely 
have changed and confused, uh, eventually the understanding and knowledge you have of, of spirituality and spiritual world will allow you to, to at least consider the possibility, right? And you may think, wow, something completely changed. Maybe I move back to the spiritual world. We can think of that. But someone that doesn't even accept the reality of the spiritual world of, or think that we are going to heaven, hell, or purgatory, um, they find themselves in none of these places. It's difficult for them to accept that they are back in the spiritual world. Um, the first reaction is, is, is negation, denying, right? No, it's not possible. It, it cannot have happened. I don't accept that. So it takes a while for, for them to accept. You read the beginning of the book, Not Solar, right? The Andrea Luis story. Um, it takes a while for him. It takes him eight years in the lower zones for him to understand and accept his new reality, right? And sincerely ask for help. So um, uh, I don't know if you watched the movie, Not Solar. That, um, um, yeah, so you see it in the beginning, right? The book describes better. But uh, so, you know, it's more or less the same. Uh, our what happens to the spirit depends on your moral involvement and knowledge, a combination of both. That's uh, the, the, what is going to make the difference for you in the first moments back in the spiritual world. Thank you. Hey, Soraya, let's okay. continue. Yes. Thus, spirits whom we may regard as advanced have not yet been able to probe the nature of the soul. So how could we ourselves possibly do so? It would therefore be a waste of time to scrutinize the beginning of things, which as the spirit book number 17 and 49 teaches, belongs to the secrets of God. To intend to discover through spiritism what is still beyond the reach of humankind in general would be to divert it from its true objective. It would be like a child who wanted to know as much as a grown-up. The essential thing is for humans to apply spiritism to their moral perfection process. Anything, anything else is mere sterile curiosity and almost always implies pride, which is, if satisfied, would not enable them to advance even one step. The sole means of advancing is by morally improving ourselves. The spirits who de dedicated the book that bears their name have proven their own wisdom by respecting the limits that God will not allow them to exceed concerning the beginning of things, leaving to theorizing and presumptuousness spirits the responsibility of premature and erroneous hypotheses, which are more fascinating than serious, and which someday will fall before the impact of reason like so many others that have risen from the human mind. They have only stated what is truly necessary so that men and women may comprehend the future that awaits them and thus be encouraged to practice goodness. Okay. So here, um, to conclude this chapter, um, Kardec talks to us about actually about what we are studying in the Spirit's book, number 17 and 49, right? Which is um, the, the God and the creation, spirit and matter, um, and he, Kardec tells us to try to discover what is still beyond the reach of humankind will be to divert, divert it from its true objective. The essential thing is for humans to apply spiritism to their moral perfection process. Anything else is mere sterile curiosity and almost always implies pride, which is satisfied would not enable them to advance even one step. The sole means of advancing is by morally improving themselves. Again, what <clears throat> Kardec is telling us here is that uh, we need to be very careful uh, not to distract ourselves with things that uh, uh, do not help us evolve morally. Again, the intellectual progress is very important. And spiritism brings a lot of information that allow us to evolve intellectually, uh, understanding our true nature, where do we come from, what are we doing here, where do we go after the physical life, 
this is all very important. But this is all very important if we can use it to help our moral evolution. If we if it helps us to um, to fight against our imperfection, uh, Elmo normally says, right, that uh, the intellectual progress is the easy one because we just accumulate things. We put knowledge on top of knowledge on top of knowledge, and we keep adding to our uh, understanding and knowledge. The moral evolution. It's, it's the hard one because we have to eliminate things and it's always more difficult to eliminate things, which is our imperfections. We have to get rid of our selfishness, our pride. Again, uh, what we need to achieve with our moral progress is to be able to be... Uh, a better spirit than what we were yesterday. We look at our incarnation journey and um, we are the best versions of ourselves. That's why Spiritism tells us that there is no much use in going looking for our uh, previous incarnations because we are always evolving. So what we are going to find is worse versions of ourselves. Again, uh, it's not that it's uh, never useful. Sometimes for tra so for traumas, to deal with, uh, with phobias and traumas, it could be relevant to address past incarnations. So we have the beautiful work of Dr. Brian Weiss that studies the psychologist, psychiatrist that studies past lives. Uh, and many cases of past lives, and it, it helps us deal with some of our traumas and phobias. But to to find out that we were the king of or queen of France or Egypt or Pharaoh or or doesn't really help us in our progress. What helps us in our progress is to address our imperfections, our shortcomings, and to deal with that. And Spiritism helps us because it brings this to the forefront of our knowledge and study, because it, in teaching us what we are doing here, what we are learning, uh, who we are, uh, it helps us to at least uh, reflect on our moral evolution, our shortcomings and our difficulties and help us uh, evolved okay so I'm not going to start uh, part two which is spirit manifestations because uh, you know it's a whole subject the action of spirits upon matter uh, I think it's worth to leave it for next month um, we have some time if anyone has any comments any questions here um, I just wanted to bring who was Lamene let me see if I find it here. Because I think it's uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. nah. I mean, uh, he was a priest. Um, Lamene lived, uh, discarnated in 1854, was a philosopher and a, polit uh, a, a writer in, in France, was a brilliant writer. Um, he was an influent figure and very controversial in the Catholic Church uh, because um, he's, he tried, uh, you, you have to remember that at the time that he was alive, uh, the French Revolution happened and they were trying to abolish uh, religion. They, they killed a lot of priests in the French Revolution. Um, and uh, he wrote a, a, a defense of uh, 
of uh, of the church in the time of Napoleon. Um, he, def he defended the absolute authority of the Pope in terms of faith and discipline. And uh, for that, he entered in a conflict with Napoleon and he had to run to uh, run away from France to to England. He came back one year later, became a priest, and um, he became famous. In um, in the, he published the uh, essays on the indifference in terms of religion in relation to the political and civil order um, after the revolution of July 1830, together with Lacordaire, which also writes in the Spirit's book, and Motin Lambert, um, he founded La the journal L'Avenir, which is, um, he defended the democratic principles, the separation between the church and the, the state, and that created, of course, a lot of problems between him and the uh, ecclesiastic uh, hierarchy in France, in the, the kingdom of Louis Philippe in France. Okay, so I just wanted to bring who was Lamennais because I think it's important uh, to understand that these, all these spirits that collaborated in the publishing of the spirits book and and brought a lot of messages were spirits that uh, were part of uh, of the religious movement in France. Uh, and in other place, in other countries at the time of Kardec or right before Kardec. Ebony. Yes, I have a question. Um, before, earlier on, you mentioned a little bit about the mechanism of mediumship being um, interaction, between, well, a, a perispirit to perispirit interaction um, yes. with a an exchange of thoughts. Um, is there, and I'm sorry if that question sounds a little bit odd, but can we as incarnated spirits make a choice or choose who, which discarnate spirits um, can interact with our perispirit? Or can, uh, question one, and question two is, can that interaction take place without our knowing of it? Um. In, in a sense, again, a, a mediumship is not something that you you can choose to 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 not use it, right? You can use it in different ways, not necessarily being an intermediary. You can use it practicing charity, but once you are a medium, you are a medium. There is no way to to block it. That if you block it, you are going to create problems for yourself, right? Now, in terms of what spirit. Um, can connect with the medium. Um, if you are in a, in a mediumship meeting in Spiritism, right, which is a, a special meeting that you have a group of people between mediums, dialoguers, and uh, a, a team of uh, support, uh, the mediums can control in a sense but uh, they sh normally, unless it's very unpleasant and very difficult and it's causing a lot of pain, um, they shouldn't. They should allow the, the spirit to communicate. Um, I will, I'll ask Rogério to talk a little bit about his uh, feelings and connections with the spirits because he worked both in our mediumship meeting and before he was working in a different organization, not spiritist. So... You want to talk a little bit about your own experiences, Rogério? Sure, I'm happy to share. I think part of uh, the work that we do, like on a mediumship meeting, it's really don't choose who you're communicating with, right? Because you're there for charity. So you basically, I mean, again, there, I, I'm assuming there's a process on the other side or you're matched with certain spirits because to know affinity or however the process happens. But I think my thought process and this is personally when i i am there i'm just available right and waiting for that spirit whoever it is whatever condition they are if they, they're able to speak to make myself available uh, i think a little bit of a that choosing per se there's to do with the affinity and your state of mind right i think if i'm in a position where i'm not feeling well or 
I have negative thoughts. I think I'm more open to connect to spirits in a, in a position where they're not in, in a good place, I assume, because of vibrations. So I think a little bit of that process is done by my state of mind and how I, I'm feeling and, and really watching that, right? Because if I'm having a lot of negative thoughts and I don't take care of it, or I don't try to elevate my thoughts or or pray or however I, I, I'm able to elevate my vibration, I would just open to the spirits that are around me, there might be in a lower vibration, right? There's nothing to do with with them. There's more to do with me. You know, if they're in a position where they're in a difficult place, they probably don't know or they are they can't get out of there, but I, I'm more conscious of it. So if I'm connecting only spirits that are suffering or I feel like low vibrations, I think it's a lot to do with my state of mind and I need to take care of that. Uh, on the other tradition where I worked, uh, I think the best way to describe, you only connected with your protectors, right? With your guides, with your spirit mentors. So you don't connect with the the low the the the, the spirits they're in need. You did help the incarnated people when they came to see you, but I think the goal was never never to connect with like the discarnated spirit that's in need. You're just connecting with your mentor and giving sort of advice or helping them to elevate their vibrations. So that's, I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Sure. Um, the second part of our, your question, which is uh, the mediums not of being aware of their being used just only works for physical phenomena, right? So let's say the, the, the uh, Fox sisters, the beginning of the spiritist movement, they start hearing noises in the house, right? uh rats and uh and this and they they chased the, the the source of the noises and they found that there was a spirit and they start communicating with the spirit so uh they the, two of them were mediums and they were being used without knowing that they were being used so the spirit was using their ectoplasm which is the the substance that used is used for physical phenomena uh, without them being aware of it. So now they what there are two types of, the, of communication, the intelligent phenomena and the physical phenomena, right? The intelligent phenomena is when the medium is consciously being used in it, meaning uh, psychophony, which is the medium talking what the spirit is wants to say, or psychography, which is the medium writing what the spirit wants to say. For those, the medium is aware of it. The, the medium can be, the communication can be an unconscious communication. But the, for the process to start, the medium needs to be aware of it. So Chico Xavier, he was an unconscious medium. So he could receive... And he did receive two communications at the same time, writing with the left hand and the right hand. And at the same time, he was talking with someone else. So it's an unconscious medium completely. But to, for the process to start, he needs to be aware of it. Uh, for physical phenomena, which is the noises or the what direct writing, meaning, you know, some you put paper inside a drawer. And when you take out the paper, it's written. Something's written there which without the medium using their hands to write, this is physical phenomena. Then the medium doesn't need to be aware. It can be, medium can be used to produce the phenomena without being fully aware that it's being used. I don't know if I'm clear. Yeah? Yes, you are. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay. John Carroll here, may yes. I ask a quick question? Or maybe sure, even sure. Rosario. Um, could there be a possibility of residue that remains after the mediumship meeting? In other words, could a medium have maybe some ill effects or is that completely canceled out by you know disconnecting from the spirit? Okay. It absolutely can. And I think we we're in a position last time that I probably asked for help. And on during the meeting, right, because I still was under the effect of a spirit that was suffering and I was feeling the physical effect of that spirit, um, a sensation of my throat being closed. 
and I do feel like it doesn't ha doesn't happen very often to me for whatever reason, but it, it does happen still. And I, I do feel like the passes or, or the energy that somebody's donating at that moment, the spirit that's donating, it does help. And uh, the answer is yes, yes, it does. It, sometimes it lingers a little bit. And... Yeah, um, the, it shouldn't, right, Carol? The medium needs to be able to get rid of, of those feelings and the medium that's why um you know laura rogerio they ask for passes flavia rarely but she does also they ask for passes because they are still feeling the lingering effects um a medium like laura she's not here today unfortunately that is a more uh, ostensive medium right and she's a medium of physical effects and everything she tends to carry with her more of the feelings that she had but normally it happens before the meeting right uh you remember flavia saying that uh, she's been uh connected with the spirit since friday and the meeting is on a monday right oh, oh so, yes yes so that happens before the meeting that they the mediums can feel that there is a spirit connecting to them and they're being prepared for the 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 meeting but but after um it shouldn't and if it's, hap if it's happening, it's the responsibility of the medium to learn how to get rid of it, to deal with it, if, the, if they need to ask for help, or, but uh, they shouldn't. They should, actually, they should leave the meeting feeling better than when they started. That's the, the, the optimal solution. That's what should happen with the mediums. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rosario. And thank you, John. That's that's very interesting, very helpful. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So um, we stop here. Um, just a reminder, we are closed tomorrow, right? Tomorrow is President's Day here in the US. So it's, as GNY will be closed, we won't have our meeting. Um, next Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. So we are going to have our Q&A session. Just bring your questions. We'll be here. Uh, any questions, doesn't really uh, matter. Any questions related to spiritism, right? Not related to politics, sorry. <laughs> but related to spiritism, we are here to answer and try to answer it to help. Elmo is still traveling. So uh, I'll see if uh, Luis can join us on the Q&A. Um, Carol, can you do our final prayer? Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much, John. And thank you, Sarita, for reading. And thank you, everyone who is here participating today. Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we give thanks for the opportunity to be, go to be together again as brothers and sisters for our studies of the Medium's book, Chapter 4, Theories. Spirits are human souls without physical bodies. Discarnates can communicate with us. However, there can be a wide range of communications that could be elevated or negative low level vibrations that can be expressed through the mediums. Human souls and spirits, <clears throat> pardon me, are not perfect and are evolving with the, each incarnation. The peri spirit is the intermediary between the physical body and the spiritual body, which is called the fluidic material envelope. A spirit can evolve by communic communicating with a medium via the peri spirit to peri spirit link up. The communication may be helpful for improving intellectual and especially moral evolution if a spirit is sincerely receptive to receiving the assistance and guidance. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors and the good spirits for guiding and inspiring us today. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us and for our loved ones, our teachers, our directors, the counselors, the mediums, the workers, and all who are connected and participating. We pray for inner peace and especially now for world peace and for those who are suffering in the physical and spiritual worlds. We pray for our center SGNY 
and all spiritist centers throughout the world that they may grow, expand, and be protected each day and each night. As we close, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we return to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. May we remind ourselves to go forth now as beacons of love, of light, of peace, of service, and of charity. So be it. <laughs>